the puppy and the pixie. Bobs was a puppy dog, a black spaniel with long floppy ears. He lived with his master and mistress in a house on the hillside and he loved to go rabbiting among the holes up and down the hill. He didn't catch a rabbit, but he liked to put his nose down a hole and then scratch and scrape with his front paws until he made quite a pile of earth outside. He felt most important then. One day, he went off by himself to sniff down a very large rabbit hole he'd found under a gorse bush. He snuffled and scraped, as excited as could be, and then he suddenly felt a sharp pain in his right forepaw. Oh! said Bobs, holding up his paw. What is it? He licked his paw, but it still hurt him. He thought he would run home to his mistress and ask her to make his paw better, but when he tried to run down the hillside, he found he couldn't put his paw to the ground because it hurt him so much. He tried to run on three legs, but even then he kept forgetting and putting his hurt paw to the ground. So he sat down on the grass and he howled loudly. He was only a puppy and he was frightened. He'd never been hurt before and he couldn't understand it. Why did his paw hurt so badly? He had licked it and licked it, but it still hurt whenever he trod on it. Oh, oh, oh he whined. Oh, oh, oh. Then he heard a small voice speaking to him from a piece of bracken nearby. What's the matter? You woke me up with your howling, puppy dog. Why do you make such a noise? Bobs looked up in surprise. He saw a small pixie swinging in a hammock made of a bracken frond. She was dressed in silvery cobwebs and had a harebell for a hat. Well, hello, said Bobs in surprise. Who are you? Just a pixie, said the little creature. I live on the hillside and brush and comb all the baby rabbits for their mothers. They keep me busy every morning, I can tell you. But what's the matter with you? Why did you make such a dreadful noise? Oh... I'm sorry I woke you up, said the puppy, but something's the matter with my paw. It hurts when I walk on it. Let me see, said the pixie, and she jumped lightly out of her bracken hammock. She ran up to the puppy and lifted up his paw. Why, you've got a gorse thorn in it, she said. You poor thing. No wonder it hurt you to walk. Let me get it out for you. No, don't hurt me, said the puppy. I shan't hurt you a bit, said the pixie. There, it's out. Look what a nasty long thorn it was. The puppy looked, and dear me, what a long prickle the pixie taken out of his foot. It was like a big needle. The little creature took a fine white handkerchief from her pocket and neatly wrapped up his paw. There, she said, now you'll be all right. Oh, you are kind, said Bobs gratefully. I hope some day I'll be able to do you a good turn too. I don't expect you will, said the pixie, climbing back into her hammock. You'll forget all about me in a few days. But Bobs didn't forget. He often thought of the kind pixie and her gentle hands. He kept the little handkerchief she'd wrapped around his paw and put it right at the back of his kennel to remind him of the pixie who'd made his paw better for him. Every time he smelt it, he thought of her and hoped one day he'd be able to do her a kind turn too. The months went by. Summer was over and the autumn came. All the leaves fell off the trees and the bracken on the hillside turned to light brown. Bobs wondered if the pixie was still there, but when he went to look he couldn't see her anywhere. Then the winter came and a very hard winter it was too. The snore fell every day, and soon the hillside was white from top to toe. Bobs had a kennel outside in the yard, and his mistress filled it full of warm hay and straw, and turned it away from the wind so that he would be warm. He was as warm as toast on the coldest night, and loved his cosy kennel. One night he heard a sound in the yard, and he pricked up his ears. It was someone sighing and sobbing. Oh my, oh my, the cold is dreadful. There is no warm place to go. Oh, I'm going to die of the cold, I'm sure. Bobs knew that voice. He rushed out of his kennel and almost knocked over a small pixie standing shivering in the middle of the yard. Be careful, you great clumsy thing, she cried crossly. You nearly sent me flying into the snow and goodness knows I'm cold enough without falling head over heels in a snowdrift. Whoa, whoa. Pixie, Pixie, it's Bobs, the puppy whose paw you made better in the summertime. Whoa, said the dog eagerly. Have you come to see me? No, said the Pixie, shivering. I didn't know you lived here. 
I've had to leave the hillside because it's so very cold, but I've nowhere to go and I'm sure I shall freeze to death. Whoa! Come and live with me, said Bobs. I'd love to have you. But you live indoors in a basket, don't you? said Pixie. No, I've got a nice little house of my own called a kennel, said Bobs. It's just here in the yard, very warm and cosy. Come along, we can cuddle up together and be as warm as toast. He took the shivering Pixie into his warm kennel, and she crept gratefully into the soft hay there. She cuddled up to him, and very soon was warm from head to foot. This is lovely, she said. I haven't been so warm for weeks. Oh, if only I could stay here. Well, you can, said Bobs. My mistress wouldn't mind a bit if she knew. She would be pleased. You know, Pixie, I always said I'd like to do you a good turn to repay you for taking the thorn out of my foot. And I'm so happy to be able to. You will be company for me, and as soon as the warm days come again, you can go back to the woods if you like. So there they live in the warm kennel together, Bobs and Pixie as cosy as pie. Would you like to see the Pixie? Well, if you know a dog called Bobs, go and peep into his kennel when he's not there, and you might see the Pixie then, right at the back, sleeping soundly in a little bed of straw.